I think we got a little bit of time here. All right. Here we go. It's now four o'clock. As vice chair, I'd like to thank for this meeting. Bring everything to order. Today is Monday, December 18th. Could we have the roll call taken, please? Commissioner Bob Howard. Here. Commissioner John Graber. Here. Commissioner Richard Lumsdale. Here. Commissioner Ann Mormon. Here. Commissioner Jerry Fugic is excused. And Commissioner John Thompson. Here. Carlos. Commissioner Carlos Prez is excused. Okay. Could we all stand, remove our head here, and do the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alrighty. Has everybody here had an opportunity to uh, review the minutes from our last session? Do you have any comments? Approvals, disapprovals? I would move we accept the minutes as written. Okay. I have a motion that the minutes from our last meeting uh, be accepted and it was seconded and approved. You have to approve it then. Oh, you got to approve that. Okay, well, let's approve it then. Oh, you have to ask mm -hmm. all in favor. All right. <laughs> oh, all in favor to say aye. Okay. Aye. All in favor. Good. Okay. Minutes approved. Hey, there's first time for everything, right? Sure. <laughs> Great. Uh, city staff, communication. Is there any staff that would like to share any communication? Uh, just briefly, um, we're in a bit of a lull uh, for some of the things that we'll be bringing to you down the road because, as you know, we had our consultants here last month to sort of do the blitz around town, and now they're back doing their thing, putting stuff together. Uh, next month, uh, there is a good possibility that we might be trying to schedule a rezone application uh, for a hearing. It's a property that is adjacent to Walmart. It's uh, off of Walmart Boulevard, um, where it looks like we might be getting um, some pro a proposal for a commercial development, a five lot commercial development. However, in that particular zone, which is the commercial three or the C3, it's called the large lot zone. And um, I forget now the percentage. 70. 70. Uh, uh, Explain it because I'm. Yeah, so I'll quick. For, so for a large lot commercial, 70% of the original parcel must stay intact as that initial okay. lot. So if somebody wants to come in and build like four restaurants, they wouldn't. They'd have to build one big restaurant on the 70% and then smaller restaurant on the other 30. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, obviously the large lot zone was intended for things like Walmarts and Costco's and all that. Well, we're, we're not seeing any interest from large lot type developers right now, but we're seeing a lot of interest in smaller commercial. So we're going to recommend that this be rezoned from the large lot C3 to C2, which would then make this particular proposal uh, feasible. So... Uh, is that on that? That doesn't come next month. It'll almost certainly come the month after next. Is that directly on that other corner, um, adjacent to Wal across the street from Walmart? Directly across the street, um, you know where the long shot uh, shooting right. range right. is. It's it's sort of an area in between that and Walmart. Okay, not the entire area between those two, but um, so is that property just before the uh, gun shop. Yeah, well, right now it's currently part of, uh, it's a parcel, uh, there are two or three parcels there that are all in the same ownership as the gun shop. So this is one of those parcels. I'm familiar with the gun shop because back in the day when it was uh, uh, Curry Lumber and Hardware, I was responsible for putting that building up. Oh, okay. So that's why I asked. It's still standing too. I'm just real bad. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we have to tag it. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so anyway, that's all I have for now. Great. Any other comments from other staff members? 
Okay, moving on. Public comments. Do we have anybody in the audience that would like to address the commission? Here that we have none. Okay, item seven. Do we have anything to ask staff and review under unfinished business? Nothing here, sir. Nothing at this time. Under new business. Does the staff have any new business to report? Sorry, you doing that appreciation now. No, that's not to your on your head. All right. Yeah, I'm Drew here. So I'm going to do the work tonight. Good uh, evening, Planning Commission. Um, so just continuing the conversation that we had from last month about the Central Business District and um, having Tim first go ahead and kind of present the challenges that he's facing as a developer within the city. Um, we've taken a look at the map and uh, kind of came up with two options that we see the most fe as the most feasible. Um, option one, I think, would be the would accomplish what we're looking to accomplish. Um, but I did throw two up two options up there. So where it shows where it's outlined in yellow, um, that's our CBD, along with what's outlined in blue there. Um, but with the outline in blue. We're looking at a little bit of a different criteria in those areas because um, obviously we don't want housing and, and residential right on Yelm Avenue. Um, we want to keep that more business oriented. Um, but at the same time, we really have a need for housing and want to have a kind of a mixed area. Um, so with that, I think we can accomplish building um, housing and, you know, small commercial um, within those blue zones by uh, option one, allow duplexes special to, or subject to special criteria in the CBD. Um, and looking at it, uh, things that we would permit are things like single family duplexes, multifamily residential units uh, may be permitted on existing residential lots, uh, lots adjacent to existing residential units and no less than one block um, from a pedestrian oriented street and pedestrian orient oriented streets are highlighted in red there. Um, those are the ones that have full sidewalks built. Um, there's another section of pedestrian oriented streets uh, up by the high school um, where it requires businesses to do a little bit or developers to come in and do something a little extra. They have to put benches out. They have to put more um, extravagant landscaping, um, but really that's our downtown core and we want that to look nice. Um, so it, yeah, residential couldn't be built within those, within that one block of a pedestrian oriented street. Um, but as we're getting off Yelm Avenue, it, it just seems like it would make sense to allow housing um, a, a few blocks back from our main street. Um, so with density requirements, that's kind of up in the air on that. Um, I don't know exactly how, I haven't nailed that down yet, um, but I think we're getting closer to a solution. Um, and I put a couple question marks up there, um, just kind of as food for thought, but possibly six units an acre. Um, I think right now it's 16 units an acre. Um, so it could be, we could look at both of those things within those special criteria. Um, and then the second option, which would also accomplish what we're looking for, but it, it honestly is a lot more rigorous, um, to accomplish the same thing as option one, but that would be to establish a new zone. Um, we could really call it what we want to call it, whether it's central mixed use, mixed commercial or mixed residential. Um, the concept is the same where we have a mix of housing and uh, availability for, you know, small commercial in there. Um, and that would, the intent of that zone would be um, kind of a mixed use district to accommodate a mixture of all those things, um, offices, commercial uses, um, and kind of be that transition zone between residential and commercial. Um, with that, I didn't put down a recommendation on paper, but um, I thought I would just communicate it to you is, you know, our recommendation would um, kind of fall on to option one and 
look at a, a few different um, special criteria to allow some housing units in those areas that are not on our downtown drag there. I think option one would be easier just because if we did option two, we are creating a new zone, we're creating a new chapter in the municipal code. There would be a lot of duplication um, between what's currently allowed in CBD and then whatever this new zone would be. Whereas if we just did text amendments to the existing zone, we could add in a few, uh, you know, more allowed uses under the criteria that Drew's talking about, which is basically I mean, function-wise, performance-wise, we just don't want any residential development occurring on Yelm Avenue and First Avenue. That's really what it's getting down to. But there are areas a block or so away that are going to be really difficult to develop with anything other than residential because of the size of the lots and the character of the neighborhood. And so we're trying to find that sweet spot where we maintain the intent of commercial development, but still allow some flexibility for residential where it makes sense. Comments, anybody? Um, I have a question. Uh, I believe that in that there's one area that's marked in blue that's on the uh, side toward, toward where um, the cinema is uh, up along. I can't Clark. It's on, one on the right. One on the right. Mm -hmm. There are already some new duplexes that have been put in there, townhouse type. Are those are those townhouses considered duplexes because they're attached, or would townhouses also be a possibility in this development code? Uh, I would I would strongly recommend allowing townhouses. Um, and Cody, correct me if I'm wrong, but were those built before the changes were made in the CBD? Correct. Um, so. As it stands today, those would not be able to be built under our current um, regulation. They just finished them. Yeah, because it's if if we do allow duplexes, I certainly suggest allowing duplexes and townhomes. That way, it's a um, it provides some consistency to some of the what's already there, mm -hmm. you know, and some of the newer things. That's just a suggestion. Absolutely. And and I put in multifamily residential, mm -hmm. um, which there is a small variation between that and townhouses. Um, but yeah, I, I completely agree that townhouses would be a great thing to add into that. That's something that's going to come up like the next session. Uh, prob well, yeah, we talked about that. Um, not likely to come up in the next session because there are other things in the code that we are looking at that we might want to also probably change. We've got, you remember I showed you that whole code changes table. Well, rather than just do one code change, I think we would like to try to do a batch if we can. So we're looking at maybe doing a couple other, um, tack, you know, um, tackling some of those other ones at the same time. So we might hold on to this until we're ready to present you with like three or four different changes to the so code. Still system. under a review study session. Yeah. Right? yeah. Just sort of thinking through it. Yeah. You know. Anybody else? Well, the other thing I wonder about is because you're talking about a block law. And that's, I mean, I, I understand the front. I've just seen Yelm for so long. I just don't see anybody coming to the second part of the block. No, in other words, there's always some uh, commercial in the front, but as soon as you move past that front store, mm -hmm. behind it is pretty much residential, mm -hmm. you know? And so, uh, you know, um, so I'd really like to see, I, I don't want to be rezoning, but it would be really nice if it was, you know, could be commercial or, or you mean behind the main yeah. street? I mean, yeah, I mean, there's some, I guess, sort of subjectivity as to how, I mean, we just we just definitely want businesses facing our pedestrian and streets. And then whether there could be some provisions to allow a residence or something behind that, we'd have to look into it. Yeah, because right now it's, 
You could always make Helm Avenue one way. That's the way you open it up to business. Well, that would work out really well. That is a, I realize that's a radical option, but it is a lot of towns do that where you have one way, one way and one way the other way. Then your businesses do have access to the main street because of that. And there is capability of doing that within the street layouts you have within the central business district. How would that work? I guess I'm just curious. Well, well say, say if I could see using Long Avenue to go one way, but then what would we use? Osmond for? Avenue might be the other one. One way. That may be two blocks too far. So there's ways you could do it. It'd probably be to the north you do the one way. Okay. Well, we'll continue to look. I at just this. throw that in as my last time on the. Yeah, I know. Sure. <laughs> the water's on your way out. How long recorded. In? <laughs> recorded now. <so. laughs> and I'll come back as a private citizen and say, "How come we don't have yeah, exactly. white roads here?" I yeah, I'm looking forward to your future public testimony. <laughs> I believe that's all we have on them for now, unless you have other questions. Moving on, under new business, we have some uh, recognition of departing members. Absolutely, I think Cody's going to take the lead on this. Yeah. So um, we have one member of the Planning Commission who will not be returning. Um, they have served 25 years, if my numbers are correct which is a long time longer than some of us in this room have been alive. Um, not you. <laughs> not me. <laughs> Just by a little bit now. Um, so I think it's a really big, big thing to recognize. And I know the amount of work you guys put in and it's all volunteer. And the fact that you guys, you know, read your package, you're the driving force behind change in the city and your help us get to where we are now is a big deal. And I think that needs to be recognized. And 25 years is a great amount of time to put in for that volunteer service. And I think the city is thankful and I'm thankful that you're here and providing that expertise and we'll be sad to see you go, but we wanted to give you a little certificate of appreciation and just say, thank you, John. Appreciate it. I have about two hours to talk. <laughs> But in reality, in the 25 years I've been on the Planning Commission, Yelm went from a town, we were identified as a town, to a city. We went to, from a one traffic light town with one grocery store, no fast foods. Odd can remember that, you know, you had no fast foods, to becoming, I remember when we first started working, we wanted to come up with a logo. We came up with the idea of Pride of the Prairie. And as I was thinking of the 25 years, and I kind of left and I wrote a letter to, to Mayor DePento and I also gave him a copy of my book. Yeah, what I'm going to do, I'm working on my fifth novel, but I gave, I promised the mayor that I'd give him a signed copy of the first novel. So he's got it. But the amazing thing is we went from pride of the prairie to actually we're pride of Thurston County. You're pride of J.B. Elm and we're probably pride of South Pierce County in just the growth we have, the people that want to come here and how fast people want to live in Yelm. And you get people saying, well, I want to put my kid in a high school where there's not all the gang problems and everything else. And I can remember back even before Todd, when gang members would show up and the whole law enforcement would show up and tell the guys, there's the road out. Don't even bother to go near the school. And we still have a community where you can feel safe. And so it's a good time to leave. It's a good time to let somebody young come in and fill the seats and look at the future but I enjoyed all of it. And a special thanks to the staff because you kept us all out of trouble. And it was just a pleasure serving both the mayors and of course the, the commissioners and everybody else and the city council, just being part of it. So I'll miss you guys, but I'll still be in town. And I promise I won't show up to this. <laughs> well, bring cookies. So John, just a couple of comments. Um, we might not have had a planning commission meeting this month because it was so light, but we definitely wanted to be able to, you know, use your last meeting to say well, thank, thank you. you. And I appreciate that. I really uh, do appreciate like serving as a volunteer on a, you know, local government committee is, you know, is, is about as local and good as government can get. And um, so you didn't tell her no member, there's no salary. <laughs> <laughs> 
put that in the fine print. Uh, but no, so I mean, anyway, thank you, Gary. Really appreciate it. And I guess just the last thing, because you mentioned uh, how Yelm is growing. I read an article last week that we are the fifth fastest growing city in Washington state. Mm -hmm. and certainly the fastest growing in Thurston County. So there's a lot going on. And stay tuned. So thanks again. Ready. Next item, public hearings. Looks like we have none. Let's bring this to our subcommittee reports. Anybody? Yeah. I'll tell you with the parks, uh, the construction has started on the trail, on Prairie Line Trail. They removed the uh, railroad ties and uh, over the weekend. Um, it's it's nice and clean and flat. It's just very, uh, it's dirt, a lot of dirt. So we're high top boots <laughs> to, to hike it. Um, and um, so that's, we'll see progress on that through until uh, paving is done when the weather permits. And uh, um, then we also had uh, a lot of work done on the stage. You've seen the new stage in um, uh, City Park, and um, uh, we were able to make use of that for the Veterans Day, uh, as well as for uh, Christmas in the Park, even though it's not complete as yet, but it's getting complete fairly soon. Um, and the dog park uh, is going to be open uh, as a soft opening. I don't know if I can remember the time frame of that. January is that or one you get yeah yeah uh, for a soft opening uh, we really want to have uh, the 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 landscaping the uh, the turf in there uh, so that the dogs don't go home too muddy and messy uh, and um, uh, that'll take the spring uh, to make that happen but so yom is growing the parks have grown a lot. And it's going to continue as we go into our next. Um, we're also doing the comprehensive plan, parks plan, uh, alongside of the, and uh, sit right next to the, the rest of the comprehensive plan. So, here. Do anything, Chris? <laughs> yes, sorry. actually, um, I spent a good portion of the morning working with the uh, Department of Natural Resources. Mm -hmm on getting our Tree City USA certification recertified. So we will be a Tree City USA recognized city for 28 years now. We have our tree board meeting tomorrow. Um, we'll discuss a little bit more about the Arbor Day celebration. Um, Lynn Roy is gonna host the Arbor Day celebration this year. So she'll be pulled into our meetings and she'll be working much more closely with the board. Um, we're gonna get out our uh, theme for the art contest out to the schools as soon as possible. We ask that all the entries are submitted by March 15th. That gives us six weeks to blow them up and put them on the giant billboards. Sometimes you run out of ink or a printer doesn't want to cooperate and it's not fun to have to panic at the last minute trying to do that. So I try to give us a nice comfortable window to work with and I'll have a lot more for the tree board tomorrow. Thanks, Chris. What else? There's no further business. I make a motion that we adjourn this meeting as of 4.23 p.m. today. I'll make the motion. That's yeah. The last motion. Yes. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Aye.